What's going on everybody? Welcome back to LH Tutorials. Today we're going to take a look at Vectorworks, one of the more uh, programs that are rising in popularity for BIM. Um, but let's just get started. So uh, on our left here, we just have the basic tools and this is the ones that you guys will be using every single day. Now keep in mind that Vectorworks does use uh, shortcut keys rather than typing commands, unlike Rhino and AutoCAD, where you literally, if you want to offset something, you would type in offset. And Vectorworks, you would have to find the offset tool and basically use it, which is right here. Um, now, each one of these is assigned to a shortcut key and it's similar to the Adobe Suites. So uh, one thing you, get, you always want to keep in mind is the selection tool is X. Now, feel free to change this in your tools workspace and you can edit the current workspace to basically fit what you think will make sense for your workflow. Uh, on the bottom here is our tool sets. I am using Vectorworks Landmark for landscape architects, but this might be different for you if you're using uh, architecture or entertainment or civil. Uh, we're not going to go too much into this. I'm just going to explore the basics for today. So up here you have your snapping options, uh, just pretty standard. You have snap to object, snap to edges, snap to tangent, snap to angle. Uh, so feel free to play around with this, uh, but I like to just keep it on default because it's very efficient just by itself right there. Uh, up here is uh, very important, but we'll get to this maybe a little bit different uh, at a later time. But really, it's just to get into your classes as well as your design layer. And you can choose which view and the rotation for the plan. All right, so I just have a quick file open from Vectorworks himself. This is just a nice sample file of a house here. And this will help us introduce all these different uh, panels on the right. So just to get us started, I'm going to select a unit or a element in this unit. Maybe I'll select the bathtub. Um, and you can see that here, it's going to tell us what kind of uh, symbol it is. So it's going to be a 2D, 3D symbol. Sometimes it's a line, sometimes it's a polygon, sometimes it's a fill. Um, but it's going to tell us what class it is and what layer it is. We'll go over that in a bit. Uh, it's going to tell us where in the world it is and many others. So for example, if I select something else that might have a little bit more, right? So this sliding door here, because this is a BIM software, it's going to know that this is a sliding door. And it's going to tell us what class, what layer, as always. But you can see all these other diameters or parameters that you can adjust. So like the width, uh, the configuration, you can actually adjust all these different things um, depending on what kind of object you select. And this is basically where you do that. Uh, on the bottom here, we have our attributes. So uh, this is basically to adjust the fill. So if I'm selecting something like this, here you can see that it's going with its class style. Uh, we'll go over classes in a bit. Uh, so both of these are actually in their class styles, but if we want to change it to something like a solid color, we can actually do that and change the color to uh, whatever color we really want here. Same thing with the stroke, with the stroke being the line, uh, and then we can uh, change this as well, and then you can see that the line on the outside actually changed. Uh, we can also make this into patterns as well as hatches. Now you can see that there's many, many different hatches and patterns that come with Vectorworks. Uh, so if you just click on this, uh, this window will pop up and you can actually switch in the resource library to whatever you want. So if you want it to look something like a concrete hatch, uh, you can do that. Now, if you also want to adjust the line weight here of the stroke, you can do that as well. So if I make it two, you can see that it's going to turn very, very strong. If I make it uh, 0 0.05, you can, turn, you can see that it's become very, very thin. Uh, you can also add drop shadow to things. So if I drag this thing out and then I add a drop shadow to it, you can see that it seemingly is floating above our, uh, our basically plane. So I'm going to go ahead and undo, which is control Z. And we're going to go into the classes and layers and sheets. Now these three are the most important ones that we want to know about uh, for any drawing. And basically layer is the one that everybody knows about. Uh, it's basically what things are stacked on top of one another. So you can separate each one of your floors into uh, one layer. Uh, so in this case, in this document, it's separating the layout, the ceiling, and as well as the slab for every single level. Uh, and you can basically just go ahead and switch between these by clicking right in front of the design layer name. And you can also just switch these on just to see what's going on. So for example, if I want to see what's going on on the first floor only, I can switch on the ceiling, the floor layout, and the slab to see what's going on. Uh, I can also just select on this row, and then this will basically turn everything to gray in that layer. So if I want to uh, gray the floor layout, you can see that everything is gray. Now, we can have the option to basically see 
only the file, sorry, not only the file, the only the layer that we have selected. So this is the ceiling layer. If I select the floor layout layer, it's gonna change just to the floor layout layer. We're not gonna be able to see anything else. If we do wanna see anything else, we can select gray others, for example. Uh, and just to show this better, maybe we will also add in the topo. So you can see that I can see the topo, but I can't select the topo. Uh, that's gray others. You can, uh, you can do gray snap others, and this will allow us to basically snap onto the other layers, but we still cannot select the other layers. Um, show others just means it's gonna show it in full color. Um, what I like to keep it on is show snap others just so I know what's going on. For example, if I wanted to draw a rectangle, I can snap onto the topo uh, like that. Um, and then the last one, which gives us the most control, but usually is the most messy, will be the show snap modify other. And that just means you have the most control over everything that's going on. So for example, if you have some trees here, but I'm not actually in the tree layer, I'm actually in the floor layout layer, I can still modify, okay, that's the topo, but I can still modify the tree, right? I can still drag the tree around. I can still drag the tree around like that and it would work. Now I usually like to keep it in show snap others just so I'm working in the layer and not working on anything else. So uh, you can see here, I cannot select the tree in this mode. Uh, now classes is basically sub layers in some other programs. I'm going to switch that off really quickly. And we're just going to focus on our four layouts. So classes is basically like sub layers and each component is in its own class. Now, what's interesting about this is you can actually adjust the class setting in order for it to change in the, in the drawing itself. So as an example, we have all these doors here and pretend I'm thinking that these doors are a little bit uh, too blue for the symbol. I want to change them to something that's more brown or black. Uh, I can go in here. I can manually change every single one of these to black or I can simply type in the uh, the class layer. So if I, if I select one of these, it's going to tell me which class it is in. So openings doors, and I can just search that up. So in our classes tab, I can search up opening and it's going to bring up all the ones that have openings in it. And we can see here that it's this one right here. So we can double check by switching that on and off. And you can see it's going to switch on all of my doors in the first floor. And we can actually go in here, edit it and just switch this into a black color. And then you can see that it's already going to turn every single one of these doors into a black symbol instead. So it's very, very uh, handy when you want to change um, different components inside your drawing without having to go in and select every single thing. Now, this is obviously different from our layers. Our layers is really just to keep uh, an upper level management of what's going on with maybe the big flooring or the big landscape or the big uh, electrical moves. And then the classes allow us to adjust things a little bit more fine tuned. So doors, symbols, um, anything that you want to massively change in a short amount of time, you can do that with your classes. Now, the last thing that we want to go over is our sheets. So our sheets is our paper space, right? It's what we publish. It's what we print. So we have the different sheets that we will be using to basically publish our, uh, documents. And you can basically set this up according to your firm. Uh, maybe your firm already has something like this, but usually this is our sheet that we want to go ahead and publish um, and draft, right? So uh, we can create viewports on here and uh, export these, um, but I'll go over this in another video. Uh, but really these are just the paper sheets that you want to have organized uh, in order to basically publish this for um, either construction uh, permit setting or whatever you really need to do. But yeah, that is basically all we want to cover in terms of the interface. And I hope that gives you guys a quick introduction to Vectorworks. I will go over uh, some of the basic tools in the later video. So stay tuned for that, please. And if you guys have learned anything from this video, I would love it if you guys can give me a like and subscribe. It would help the channel a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video.